Thanks everybody for joining us. This is the end of the Standing on Sacred Ground film series streaming. We've over the last four weeks been streaming the four hour series that we produced some years ago from 2007 to 2014. And uh, I hope some of you have been able to watch all four films. We started out in the Altai Republic of Siberia and up at the Winnemumwintu territory in Northern California where the Altaians and the Winnemum are fighting huge government projects, a uh, gas pipeline in Russia and the Shasta Dam rays here in California. And then we went over to the tar sands in uh, Canada and the Papua New Guinea folks who are fighting big mining projects. Uh, last week, we were in Ethiopia and Peru where climate change and fundamentalist Christians are attacking the traditional landscape of, of uh, sacred land and, and culture in, in Peru and Ethiopia. And for our fourth hour, we tried to find some good news stories around the world. And uh, in Australia, where the concept of an indigenous protected area has taken hold, where Aboriginal people are managing their traditional lands. Uh, and then here with uh, the folks in Hawaii at Kaho Olave. Hi, Emmett. Hey, hey how's it going? Good. Good, good. Got your mask. All right. In between patients, so um, okay. standing by. I understand you may have to run out. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have about 30 people listening in. Daviana has joined us. I'm just finishing up an intro. Um, but in Hawaii, uh, the native people in uh, Kaho'olawe stopped a 50-year uh, assault on a sacred island by the U.S. Navy and Emmett was one of the first people to occupy the island and uh, successfully over many years lead to the stopping of the bombing. And Daviana and Emmett are partners over there and have been for many years leaders of the Protect Olave Ohana. So it's really thrilling to have both of you with us today. Thank you so much. Daviana is professor of ethnic studies and director of the oral history project at the University of Hawaii in Manoa. And Dr. Emmett Aluli runs the Molokai Family Health Center, which is a community clinic there in Molokai. And uh, Luana Busby Neff, who I can see just joining us and connecting to audio. Uh, Luana and her husband, Craig Neff, own and run a wonderful store in Hilo on the Big Island called Hawaiian Force. And they've been selling local art and making incredible political t-shirts for Kaho Olave for decades. And uh, they are also leaders in the Protect Kaho Olave Ohana movement. And Luana has for years now been leading prayer protocol on Mauna Kea, where many of you have heard the most recent struggle for uh, protecting uh, Mauna Kea from the 30 meter telescope. And after we have a little conversation about Kaho Olave and get caught up on what's been happening there. Hi, Luana. Can't hear you yet, but hopefully you'll get your audio going. And uh, we'll hear from Luana also to speak about both Kaho Olave and Mauna Kea. So it's wonderful to have you all three with us. And um, Luana, it looks like we still need your audio. They're connecting to audio. I like to see that. So thanks everybody for joining us. There's some audio. Hi, aloha. 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 <laughs> so Davey, Davey and, and Emmett, I thought we could start maybe Davey with you. Just bring us up to date what's going on on Kaho Olave. Uh, it's an incredible uh, cultural revitalization, ecological restoration. You guys have been dedicated throughout your entire lives. Tell us since we finished the film, what, what's been going on on Kaho Olave? Davy, then Emmett. Well, at the time of the film, we were under a lot of pressure from the legislature to um, try to commercialize the island. And that was a huge pressure that we were feeling. They, because the, the federal money that was set aside, the, um, there was $44 million as part of the cleanup money. That money was running out and the legislature is going to have to put up the cost for um, the management and restoration of the island. And they were putting a pressure on us that we should open the island for commercial activities, such as what we see at Molokini with diving, commercial diving and other kinds of 
you know, commercial ventures. But um, that pressure has subsided and the, the legislature has acknowledged its kuleana, its responsibility to uh, support the restoration work of the um, island. And so they are funding, they, there's a, there's, all the operations had to be streamlined um, so that the, um, the island's only open by the state, um, or the state has its operations for about two weeks a month. And so they've had to streamline their costs and they, they only get about one and a half million dollars a year from the state legislature to support the restoration work. And then they've been, you know, very aggressively writing grants and getting other kinds of support to continue uh, the restoration of the island. But since then, we've also um, developed a, a new strategic plan we call Iola Kanaloa, which means, you know, that Kanaloa lives. And I think our motto for this period is Iola Kanaloa, Iola Kako, that when Koholawe lives and thrives, um, then we will be nourished and live and thrive as a Kanaka, as a, pe as a people. And so that plan, um, you know, looks out at uh, it aggressive, we, we set our date for 2026, which will be 50 years since the first landing on Koholawe to, to restore you know, save the island from being bombed and for military purposes. And so by 2026, we aim to have all of the top, the hard pan area that was seen in the film, we hope to have all of that covered with um, new plantings. And there have been some new approaches to planting using more Hawaiian styles, just, you know, trying ways to put little, little uh, ili ili stones around the plants to accumulate and capture that moisture in the air. And it's been quite successful. So there's, there's you know, new, new growth on the hard pan that's been very uh, evident. And um, our plan is to welcome various schools from different um, Hawaiian um, uh, schools of learning, be it from Lua, the fighting arts, or um, Lauhalo weaving, or hula, or music, um, to come to Koholawe and master their skills there. Use, use Koholawe as that kind of like a university level for mastering um, our different uh, skills and practices and to attract um, university to come and to, uh, from Maui, the Maui College across the way at Maui and from University of Hawaii Manoa to come and engage students in learning about sustainability and resilience of island ecosystems there on Koholabe. Because as we're beginning to have success in our planting, we see that resilience. And we're also looking at attracting back the seabirds and you know, eradicating the cats so that can happen. One setback we have had though um, in February of 2020 is that there was a, a fire on the island, a wildfire what, that burned for six days. It eventually burned 9,000 acres of land. Mostly though, it burned the underbrush, the, I mean, the, the grasses that were under and not, not the large trees. Um, but for ourselves, um, we had the Protect Lobby Ohana, we had an area that where we're, we had staged supplies to um, build our trail around the island. So we, we lost about $10,000 worth of equipment that we've been using for um, the staging of the, the cleanup and the, the tools that we use to open up the trails. But I think the, um, the Kohlabi Island Reserve Commission lost most of their restoration equipment and tools. So their damage is more like 50 to $60,000 range. Um, but luckily, the um, the fire was was very quick moving, and it mostly burned the invasive grasses, and it didn't burn the native species that had been grown because they were they were still green and and vibrant. So it 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 mostly destroyed the invasive species. So there was an, actually probably a a benefit to the natural processes on the island, and the more impact was on the human. Um, you know, tools, equipment, and things like that. But the natural resources, I think, uh, will will come back and and more in a more healthy form. Damn it! Um, let's go to you. I, you know, the the amazing thing to me about Kaho Olave was how your ecological work is so grounded in in tradition, culture, and spirituality. And I'm wondering how that 
uh, that marriage of ecological knowledge and spirituality, how that is continuing to flourish. Um, if you could give us an update, Emmett, but also let us know, you know, from your point of view, how it's going with the Makahiki ceremony and um, the cultural activities uh, out there on Pajo Olave. Well, uh, thanks, Toby. Um, really briefly, um, just some history again. Um, after the initial occupations in, in 1976 and uh, going on for a year, and um, in which we galvanized a lot of support, um, uh, and we kind of like rekindled the Aloha Aina phase, phrase that uh, in the um, in the attempts of, of our our, um, our communities, there was a petition that went around uh, uh, signing up against the annexation of Hawaii, and it was started by um, a guy named Joseph Navahi and his wife and and. They use the term aloha aina, uh, love of the land, take care of the land, the land take care of you. Uh, and that was their theme, that was their newspaper. And um, with that, uh, George Helm and uh, just kind of told myself and Walter Reddy that, that we w should bring that phrase back into uh, life. Um, after George disappeared or was kind of like uh, murdered, some people say, um, we had to rethink things. And one of the things was a class action suit against the Navy, uh, bringing all the environmental claims, the historic sites claims, the access claims. Um, and we kind of like settled that in a consent decree that gave us um, access um, to Kohlavi. And our kupuna, uh, Auntie Edith Kanaka Oli, said, you go to Kohlavi. Uh, and established a makahiki. And the makahiki uh, is a seasonal festivity, kind of like um, greening of the island during the um, periods of fall uh, and early winter. Um, and it's kind of like, it wasn't, um, it was coupled, it was overthrown, it was not performed uh, for about 100 years. And so we brought it back into uh, calling the god Lono, the um, winter god Lono, who bring the clouds, the winds, the rain, green the island, raise the water table. And that's the ceremony that's been going on since 1980. Um, and it's really taken off. I mean, people kind of like um, Kolavi has established um, uh, a portal uh, to our gods, uh, Lono for sure, Kani, uh, and also um, Kanaloa, for which the island is used. And so that's the kind of thing that Kohlavi is, is probably played a very important role in uh, bringing back our religion um, and our practices. So that's the update. Uh, we had uh, our 44th um, anniversary Makahiki um, back in February and it was well attended, I think. What happened, some people are saying that we asked Lono to come in the form of rain, but then he came in the form of lightning, which probably kind of ignited the fire. I mean, that's some of the kind of like uh, explanation from a cultural perspective. Um, and the cleansing of the island and the restart, reset, and move forward. Hey, Luana. Hey, oh. Is this too uh, bright? Aloha. No, that look, you look good. It's fine. Always. I wonder um, if you could, you know, I just have to say that as I've gone around the world and, and met with and, and tried to help tell stories of indigenous struggles to protect land and culture, the values in Hawaii are so profound and so beautiful in terms of grounding a struggle. I. I noticed that, you know, the Protect Kaholavi Ohana, many years before Standing Rock, put the word protect at the forefront of what you have been doing. And Ohana, the concept of a family, an extended family of ancestors and future generations. And I wonder if you could talk about Aloha Aina that, that um, Emmett just mentioned, and also Kapu Aloha, as as the values that are that are underneath and within your work 
uh, both at Kaholave and at Mauna Kea. But let's start with Kaholave. Well, actually, I was going to start as a practitioner, as a Wahini Apopolani, and offer a chant. And, you know, and that will actually lead right into the Aloha Aina and the Kapu Aloha and what those chants as maps entail. So without further ado, Please. O ki kubula wana me kane o gai lo o gai he e wa ki kalewa kono o hua kua mu ia e kane kua wa ia e kane ko i mai wa ki a lo ko o la ni mo 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 e wa ki mo ya pa Hano kala na wake, eke ki kapu na wake. O ka uuna o wake na ki anu. Hano kamona, he ma kahi apu kapu na ki a. O ya ho i o kamona, hano kamona. O kamona awa ni i ko la lo neva. O vai la awa ni i ko lo nani. O vai la. O ka la, aia, aia ho i ha. So there you go, when you look at Hawaiian cosmology and how we honor the earth, you know, we are a part of that earth. We are that earth and really recognizing the relationship between Sky Father and Mother Earth and the bearing and borning and giving birth to an island and more importantly to a mountain. Um, in this time now when we speak of Mauna Kea. So it's showing you that our ali'i and our kupuna is actually the land base itself. When we talk about aloha aina, we talk and we, we live practices of kapu aloha, which is what that chant is really um, a practice of. Um, and not just um, showing our descendants and how we come forward to this place, but how we honor, acknowledge the forces that proliferate life on this planet for us Kanaka to live on. And so it's really about that relationship and that connectivity and that familial connectivity to your landscapes around you. It, they're family. You know, it's not just wind and rain and mountains and, you know, fauna and flora. It's everything is, is an intimately internet connected relationship that we have. And these all are beyond the human family, the families of elementals, families of water, the families of rains and mists. Um, so for me, I'd like to approach this conversation in that manner since I stand really as the one who practiced for many years, starting with uh, Kaho Olave um, and starting with, I think, uh, the couple of has gone kind of global and have an understanding of really where that comes from. It comes from old, a, a, a ceremonial sense that we've had for, for the last 40 years within the Protect Kahu'olave Ohan anyway. And so when you enter into a ritual, rituals that activate right action, you have to be pono. You have to be ma'i ma'i, clean inside of your na'au, clean in your, in your gut, clean in your heart space, clean in your in your connection and have respect, integrity for the reverence that of life that is around us. And so you have to actually put yourself into a space where when you do the ceremony, that ceremony unfolds in a grand way with that, with that mana that you have given full focus to. So for me, it's been a learning um, um, for many years as a, you know, for coming from 19 to now in my going into 60s, hmm. you know, so for the last 40 years of learning really what Kapu Aloha was about was through ceremony and through our dedication and commitment to the health and well-being of our land base, which is the health and well-being of our people. 
you know, Kaho Olave has a pico, Kanaloa, which is that the umbilical cord that connects us to the depths of our oceans, and Wakea, Mauna Kea being the Kapika O Wakea, that umbilical cord that connects us to, you know, the highest realms of our skies, into our lanis, into the heavens. You know, so we have these, these gems and jewels and relationships that need to be tended. And the last 40 years of struggle, hard won struggle through the Aloha Aina movement and the Pateka Ho'olavi Ohana for me has only lent me the strength, the clear scene and the commitment to carry um, ceremonies that acknowledge not just Mauna Kea, but our relationship to that, to re, um, uh, remember and reactivate our knowing of the incredible resource and sources that the Mauna is for us. And Mauna Kea is a water source. So, you know, I don't want to mention, you know, all the things there, but there are a lot of things that are happening with that um, place right now. And, you know, maybe you could lead me into this because I may be kind of going off on a little tangent that I can be inclusive to what the conversation is here, you know, but we are laying out um, a a blueprint for what proper management looks like for our mountains. Like Davy just laid out the whole plan for the next, for Kaho Olave, the work that has been done, the work that's being doing now and what we'd like to see in the future. Um, same with Mauna Kea, um, laying out a plan of not just reforestation because that that has, it been just like Kaho Olave. Mauna Kea, Pohakuloa, and the lands of Pohaku was like, I don't know, 14 Kaho Olabis all in one, and it is a bombing range. And in fact, as we speak, RIMPAC is still gearing up and getting ready to come over to do their RIMPAC feet exercises using Pohakaloa as their space. Um, they didn't cancel it, regardless of everything else on the globe being canceled. RIMPAC is not canceled up at Pohakaloa. They say they downsized it, but in reality, um, it's still going. And so we're addressing that and the steps that we're needing and, you know, because it's all a work in progress, you know, but the blueprint is reestablishing the ecological balance that is up there, our water sources to really map them out and look at exactly what's happening up there and to form older relationships that our kupuna knew about. You know, those are all a Papalani realm. A Papalani meaning those are the God realms. Those are the realms where our cosmology in the Kumulipu says, There are realms that do not belong for human beings to be in, and that is that realm. And so the practices even we have up there, only the highest of our people were allowed in those realms. Um, and that was just to go up and come down. And, you know, it wasn't to, for anything more than, communing with those, um, with the gods from that level. And when I say gods, it can be touchy sometimes because people don't understand what that means. But really, when you're looking at the form, elemental functions that help our planet move, um, and Oya Valeno. So we are taking, a, uh, not a break, but it's an opportunity to roll up our sleeves and create that blueprint that doesn't come from um, purely economic uh, reasons or from a place where the old status quo has never considered the voices of the people that come from this place. To not just be on the table, but be, to lead that table, to lead that discussion, to lead that wisdom and that intelligence that was passed to us that we have. You know, it needs to be at the forefront and all the science needs to come around that. And so it's, um, it's, that's the work that's getting done right now. Um, thank you, thank you. Um, Davey, uh, could you talk a little bit about how the consciousness of uh, what you have achieved at Kaho Olave has spread to other islands and other issues, specifics, including Mauna Kea and Haleakala in terms of, I mean, um, Luana can talk about that maybe at the end of that, but. What's going on on other islands that's been seeded and inspired by the movement on Kaholave? Yeah, I think we call it Aloha Aina Rising at this moment, and it's all inspired by both Kaholave and um, Mauna Awakea and the the Kiai, the the guardians of Mauna Awakea, and because thousands of of 
Kanaka and, and people from throughout Hawaii have um, rallied around Mauna Kea and as a sacred place that needs to be protected. Um, and standing up as Kanaka to challenge that. The, the Mauna Kea movement is what Koholawe was to Native Hawaiians and the Hawaiian, uh, Hawaii's people back in 1976 and this, throughout the 70s and 80, early 80s. Mauna Kea is you know, this generation's Kaho'olawe, but it's spread, um, uh, inspired by that, you know, they're here on, um, on Oahu, I'm, I'm in Molokai, but on Oahu, um, at a place called Kahuku, where they're putting up, you know, industrial size windmills that are very close to the community and impacting upon um, the schools and uh, and people are very concerned about the health impacts of the windmills going up. They have, you know, protested those windmills and come together in protest with protocol um, to to honor and call upon our ancestors um, to you know help protect our communities. Um, but coming together in protocol as we do on on Mauna, Mauna Kea to protest these these windmills to protect the communities. And likewise on the eastern part of, of um, the northeastern part of our island at Waimanalo, people are concerned that there is going to be construction of a park that was going to impact on Native Hawaiian burials there. And they have come together as a community to um, protest that and also invoking Aloha Aina and coming together in protocol as we do on Mauna Kea. Um, and simultaneous with Mauna Kea, there are more so in military telescopes. Um, for the STARS program up at Haleakala that were going up and the Daniel K. Noy telescope and, and uh, system up there at Haleakala. And at the same time that people were getting arrested on Mauna Kea, people were getting arrested on Haleakala to protect Haleakala as also another of our sacred Mauna, our sacred places. So um, there's been a whole con uh, it says it's un unstable streaming, but um, yeah, there's been a very, very um, profound consciousness of Aloha Aina that has spread. And, it, you know, the core of that was from Koholawe. And we are now three generations of activists on Koholawe. And it, that second and third generation is now taking the leadership. Davey, it's freezing again there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, but I think the idea is that when we commit to Aloha Aina, we commit for generations. And for us on Koholabi, we're into our third generation. And that third generation is now taking that Aloha Aina message and standing up for Aloha Aina on all our islands. Great. I am curious um, if you have seen any tangible results from our filmmaking together. Um, was it worth it? You know, did because it was you guys had to, you know, I had to come over for like five research trips. You make decisions by consensus, and um, letting an outsider in to tell a story is risky. And for me, it was just such a remarkable experience. I, I'm so grateful that we were, I was first came with my family mm -hmm. to the island, uh, my two kids and my wife Jessica, who wrote the film, who's upstairs listening. Um, I just wonder if there's been any results that you can report. Uh, there's my question <laughs> for any of you. I, I've got a couple of pages lined up, but you know, Toby, uh, standing on sacred lands, sacred ground, has really given us an international indigenous feeling. Uh, mm. Doing the same mm. thing, same communities, against the same kind of struggles. Um, and uniting and praying for each other has been something that uh, we've experienced in Jeju. We're hoping to experience that at the this month, next month, in in what Mercedes? Uh, yeah, Emmett's referring to the uh, IUCN World Conservation Congress, where we went. We went to Jeju, happened. South Korea, and then we had a whole group of sacred site guardians come to Kaho Olave in 2016 you guys really welcomed this it's ceremony together and networking and that's so that's what Emmett's referring to go ahead and it was just really nice to have everybody share the same kind of like religious feeling on Koho Lobby uh, especially it takes me back to the the Kenya folk who just never even submerged 
your head in, in water before. <laughs> and to see everybody frolicking in the waves mm -hmm. of Kiwaba and enjoying the <laughs> elements, which right. is really uh, the best feeling. And to be lifted up in the ceremonies. I mean, actually, you know, folks were just kind of got us mm -hmm. off the ground and we looked at each other and say, what magic, what connection, what power. Yeah, yeah. I'll actually add to that as well. Um, in, and not just what we, we saw and we gave, but the connections that we've made all over the world with native um, peoples, you know, from Altai Russia, from Kyrgyzstan, from the women went to Shasta. Um, we had Kenya, we had in Africa, we had Papua New Guinea, we had, and these are wisdom keepers that, um, that are beloved in their own countries and that are fully in the works, but that connectivity um, and those relationships that were formed during that time when they came with us to Koho'olawe um, are forever. This is, this is how we're going to do this. This is like connecting peoples from all over the globe and we need to form those kinds of relationships. So to support each other, to know what's happening um, and to be a part of this, this movement of uh, Aloha So it was very important, Toby, that you were brought into and, and, and included uh, the Kaho'olawe struggle and movement and restoration, not just the struggle, but the solutions behind that, so that it was global and people could see um, where we are in standing on sacred grounds. Hmm. So mahalo. Those those relationships are ongoing, and yes, we're supposed to meet again at IUCN in this somewhere, but not now, just because of the the, the pandemic. Um, but I see some good things unfolding from those relationships that we're going to build on. Thanks. We we did get a taste when we went to Altai to first show the rough cut of the film, and and we had an audience of forty or fifty different people, including many shamans. The that was the first time I heard the the sentiment that we we feel like we're not alone in this struggle by yeah. seeing other people's struggles and linking them. There came a strength and an awareness that um, it kind of surprised me. I mean, we we all forget that the internet is so new, you know, this free communication system that we have, the sharing of stories beyond the corporate media. So it's been, um, it's been great to watch that international networking of protect, real protectors of the, mm -hmm. the health and the spiritual life of the earth. It's been really incredible. There's a, one question which uh, is from a non-Hawaiian, an American citizen saying, how can we help? How can people help? Well, I think for um, Mauna Wakea, we want to put pressure on those um, entities that are funding the oh freeze. Um, the National Science Foundation is is look, being looked to very heavily to to come through with the major funding mm -hmm. for the TMT, and so I think as we um, look at, we want to um, make sure that federal funds do not are not spent. Um, on the construction of TMP, uh, but also um, the, the one of the University of California, the University of California system, is one of the supporters. Is it is that right, um, Luana? Is it University of California that's also a funder? So I think uh, if we go to the Mauna yeah, Kea page, funders for the TMP. Yes, right. Yeah. So we need pressure on the funders because actually. Um, India has pulled out and Japan has has also said that they would not fund for a year at least, maybe more. So the more we can put pressure right. on funders to withdraw their support for the TFT construction, uh, that would be really very helpful. Yeah. That's great. Um, we have another question which is along the same lines from a, um, someone who's at an academic institution up in Washington state saying that there's sort of been a diaspora, you know, of Pacific Islanders who are now over here on the mainland. And ways for, for those folks 
intergenerationally to feel connected and to, you know, sort of try to be helpful, but feel connected culturally. So do you have any thoughts for younger people who have a heritage connection to the islands, but are, are far, living far away now? Well, you know, one part of that was the entire time we were up on Mauna Kea from with July 12th, 13th, 14th, we started with those ceremonies. And then out of that birth, organically, an aha that actually held those ceremonies morning, noon, and night every single day. So it was a huge learning for our Lahui, our own people, to practice those. And everybody participated and you did it. We had live streaming where people could come to learn the chants. People could come, because the chants are just not chants. They're just deep ike, deep knowledge and wisdom that comes forth from these chants, specifically the ones that were chosen for the aha. Most to do with healing, most to do with connectivity, most to do with strengthening and empowering the, the, your spirit and your connection. And then allowing those portals inside of yourself to open up to see how you best can support this movement, that something that is uniquely yours, not to, to give. You know, as Native people, ceremonies, myself included, has always helped me um, be strong and, and focused and clear on what it is that I can give in the time that you're going through these different um, occupations or situations. Um, so for our Native peoples, we, we, we gather around ceremony because those are energetic opportunities, not opportunities, but ikes that we have a kuleana to, to get yourself in the best place that you can get um, and to be of service to your land and your, your people. Um, so the ahas are actually still online. We've stopped now because of the, the pandemics, but it re really helped people reorganize your thoughts, your way, your heart, your mind, kind of realign mind, body, spirit, because we, sometimes we just get stuck in the political you know, um, realms, and there are so many more realms that need to be addressed in order to be, have a fuller understanding of what we're really doing and what we're really going for, and then allowing that direction to come that has... Um, from the highest source within yourself and outside of yourself. So that's what I can offer as, just as a, a, a practitioner for that EK. And then, and then we have the, you know, the practical things, writing letters to the Senate. I mean, we need to organize that political body where we have more people involved that we trust and that are committed to the land, that are committed to the movement, that are committed to the health and well-being of our peoples, all peoples, this earth. You know, we need to change and up the status quo. You know, there are many ways to, to be a part of this. It's not just one way. There are many ways. And only you can figure out what way you can best support. If you want to support, how can you? Can you write a letter to the Caltech? Or if you're from the mainland, you know, really address or create a petition that goes around so we don't support this kind of um, invasive technology that overlooks the the or, or doesn't acknowledge the base peoples of the places that they're coming into in a way that has a conversation that is truthful and not you know um there's a lot of fake news all around it's looking for the truth of things and like george helm said the truth the truth the truth aloha aina you know meaning that the land the love of our land and the land loves us and in that recognition allowing us to guide any that you want to take. It supports the people, it supports the health same. Land is not separate, we are animated earth. You know, so life around us, we are part of that. We are part of that web in a deep way. So, um, there you go. So, awesome. I'll <laughs> I have a couple messages here. Um, Professor Keholani Kawanui at Wesleyan. Uh, thanks you for this rich session, sending good wishes from Connecticut. And Steve Moore with NARF oh. in Colorado sends deepest aloha and mahalo to Davey and Emmett mm -hmm. for your mentorship and leadership over the years. And then a shout out to Coleco Baker, who has been my, my um, handler, right? He's, he was the, 
we, we, along with Donnie Dawson, he was assigned the difficult job of uh, handling the film crew for many years. So hello, Calico. And he's got a question, which is in 20 years, what Aloha Aina goal would you like to see achieved 20 years from now? What would be a goal? Davey? <laughs> well, um, of course, for Koholabe to be at that center of cultural training, acknowledged as a, as a sacred island, again, elevated to that level of being a sacred place where um, we can come to reconnect with our Hawaiian culture and our practices. And for our sacred mountains to be um, uh, protected from the industrialization that is going on. Um, and importantly for us though, to really look at our coastal areas that are gonna be you know, um, inundated, as we know with the sea level rises predicted through climate change and that our communities are providing stewardship and has, and has um, we've figured out ways to, to, to be sustainable within our, 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 our island districts, uh, our, what we call our moku, and that we have these hubs of, of food sovereignty areas, of sustainable productive areas that our communities can, um, can rely upon without you know, looking to outside importation of, of um, what we need to, to live here on islands. And I think this COVID-19 experience has really made everyone more conscious of how we live on an island and we need, we need to be more self-sustaining and, and how do we begin to redirect our, our economy away from tourism and toward agricultural sustainability and also stewardship of our resources, more importantly, stewardship of our oceans and our land. Juana, do you have thoughts? Beautifully. Well, it was actually beautifully said, one who's been involved in the sustainable movement in Hawaii for at least the last 20 years. We started with Hawaii. But yes, Hawaii needs to be a breadbasket for Hawaii. We need to be we need to be more independent in our food sources. We need to we have such a, a, a rich land base and the surrounding oceans. We have a system that was set in place by our kupuna and our ancestors that we could go back to and and, and inclusive of using the technology that we have today and just better the system because it's all about balance. You know. It, from our, our, our land and our oceans and how to put couples on, on, on different fishes and through different seasons and same with the land base. You know, we need to grow our own food. That's that end of story. We need to grow our own food and we need to have an economic base that actually supports that, that, um, that scene. And so 20 years from now, you know, my clear scene, I see exactly what David just stated as well you know, a more um, a, a mountain that is no longer desecrated, that is reforested, that brings back, you know, it's just setting and resetting um, our land base and, and having a deeper appreciation for the wealth of what we really have. I think we've been disconnected from what that means to a certain extent, but 20 years, like we've seen on um, the, the cloud forms from, that go over the lay of clouds that went over to Kanaloa, that disappeared for many years. You know, then we had the rain ceremonies and reforestation for the last 25, 30 years on Maui and Kaho'olawe. And what we saw was magic. We saw the rain clouds come back. Hmm. You know, we saw the, that had been lost. That's, that's like, wow. For me, it, it, it changed my life. You know, because now we know that everything is possible with that kind of scene. And so, um, Thank you. Well, I have to say, uh, the last week, two weeks ago, we had Winona LaDuke. Uh, we've had three previous conversations to this one, incredible conversations. Luana is a very close friend uh, with Winona as well. And um, Winona talked a lot about relocalizing, uh, what you've just been talking about. Uh, we've also, mm -hmm. for everybody who's listening, we had a um, nice conversation with Winnemum Chief Colleen Sisk three weeks ago, last week with Ethiopian elder Odessa 
Wolde and all of those, including this one, will be on YouTube as recordings if people have missed this convert this great conversation. Um, but we did have a question which you guys really just answered, but it's it's really about relocalizing. That was what Winona talked about, and you just have too. It seems to be an insight that's really sprouting up right now. People realizing we can do this, but we need to be more focused on our home environment. Do you, do you see a resurgence of that now in Hawaii? I mean, I, obviously we're all stuck in our homes for the most part, but are you sensing that there will be a real appreciation of local environment and do, making do with what's the resources you, you, you talk, talk about the Kua plan that you've been working on. Well, here in Molokai, we're part of um, our Malama Mo'omomi effort to bring stewardship of our, our resources to the community. Um, and there's also, um, Mac Poi Poi is our, is our uh, kupuna here who started this and, and provides the, the traditional knowledge uh, to use in, in managing our resources. Um, but he has given inspiration to um, uh, a network of other communities. So there are like 74 different communities on all of our islands from Hawaii to Kauai. And we're working together to um, bring stewardship uh, to our own um, uh, places. Uh, and co-management with government, we acknowledge that government plays a role, especially in helping us to um, protect our subsistence resources from commercialization. And government laws can assist us in, um, you know, reserving areas for subsistence practices, in, in, we're talking about in the ocean, and, and preventing commercialization of our resources. So um, there, there is a network, it's, it's, uh, it's a group called Kua, Kua Aina, Awamo uh, Aina, and as I said, there's 74 different communities throughout our islands that are working for this stewardship of, of our natural resources, both both on land and, and ocean. And, and it, it all, they also have a network of those people who are reviving our, uh, our fish pond, uh, applying our traditional knowledge about fish pond aquaculture in, in our fish ponds around the, uh, every island had you know, numerous fish ponds, I think. Molokai here had like 60, 60 fish ponds, 69 fish ponds. So um, uh, there's a real movement through these community efforts to, to bring that stewardship home and, and focus on sustainable and re, uh, resilience uh, of our communities and our resources. Great. What was the name of that group again, someone asked? Um, Kua, and it's K-U-A. Uh, is the initials, they, they go for short, it's Kua Aina, which means the, the people who are of the land, always been connected to the land, maintain that connection to the land. Awamo is uh, everybody pulling together and, and uh, sharing the burden together. And Aina, and it's just, you know, we bringing the, the responsibility to keep our resources healthy and, and nurturing. Kua Aina, Awamo Aina, but then uh, Kua Aina, Kua for short. Okay, got it. There we go. Um, Emmett, I have a question for you as a physician and a community health practitioner. I know over all these decades, one of your passions has been healing the land and, and people together. And I wonder if you have perspective on this pandemic that we're now going through. There are you know, a lot of people looking for insight and perspective on what the earth is telling us, what, what the meaning of this moment is. And I wonder what your reflections are being there on the front lines. And thank you for all your incredible healing and service over all these years as a, as a doctor. Well, well first of all, um, we need statistics. I mean, because uh, Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders have scored in their disparities in, and their um, diagnoses and, and treatment, like in California, especially Los Angeles, in Washington State, in Nevada, um, in Alaska. So it's an indigenous thing. It's uh, Native American, Alaska Native, Native Hawaiian, um, second to the African Americans. And, and then they come to look at uh, us guys um, and so we don't have the same uh, disaggregation of our own kind of like 
Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders. Um, and we need that. And the state has been in default for not providing that for us so we can plan. I think the real problem is we, we lucked out basically as a state in our own kind of like um, virus infections. Um, but we're worried about a second, third wave. Uh, only because we have all the disparities, not only the chronic diseases, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, smoking, um, asthma, but we also have the social kind of like problems. So we live in big families, we live together, we hug each other as a greeting. We kind of like, um, you know, we have those disparities that we need to kind of start preparing for because otherwise it's going to take us like, you know, like the 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 virus of, of before without having some sort of like opportunity to understand it um and it initially kind of like shut us down and, and started us thinking um you know tourism they close all the beaches um economically there's nobody visiting or they come to molokai they gotta you know really quarantine themselves for two weeks and we're small communities so we know who's out there who's not doing it. Um, but it's a time for us to really rethink and, and start looking at our own families um, and to be prepared and to kind of organize cross section, you know, not only the Native Hawaiian positions, but the kind of those agencies. Um, and we got to do it ourselves. We can't depend upon our state because they have no focus for Native Hawaiians. And, and I'm sure that the urban and rural Native Americans have that same, you know, attitude or distrust of our own governments. So we got to do it ourselves. Yeah. That's my thoughts. Anyway, I got to get to the next patient. Okay. Thank you, Emmett. We'll come in back and forth and I hope you're recording. Okay. We are recording. Oh, great. Yeah. There was a question, uh, Davey, about whether uh, you could recommend a book or some books where people can learn more about Hawaiian culture and spirituality? Sure. Um, well, there's my book. <laughs> my book is um, called um, Nakua Aina, Living Hawaiian Culture. And I only recommend it because it draws heavily upon the knowledge of our kupuna and the practices of our kupuna. Um, uh, about our spirituality, I. I have to ask Luana, we, I'd have to think more, um, I mean, there's many books. It, um, there's a well, you know, books. we have our primary sources. Yeah, of course. There's um, a David Malo, uh, um, um, who, who wrote about Hawaiian antiquities. Uh, it's called Mo'olelo Hawaii. And Samuel Kamako, these are our, our, our ER. Our, mm -hmm. our traditional Hawaiian historians, Samuel Kamakau, he has many different publications, um, John Papai'i, and um, yeah, Davida yeah. Malu, and, um, and then there's been some new um, at work of um, um, Deshay, Stephen Deshay, uh, with our um, mm -hmm. uh, Kamehameha and his warrior, Keiku Haukio. Right. <laughs> Did you mention um, Auntie Pua's book, the with the chance? Oh. Rolani's book, um, Ola Honua. Ola Honua, definitely. Ola Honua, and you know, there's yeah. their website. I think the the um, yeah. foundation website has resources there too, and the Mauna Kea right. has Ola. resources uh, about. Okay. And our, I put um, right. the Tech Labiohana website too. Great. Mm. Well, Luana, you, go ahead. Kanaloa, uh, Voices of Kanaloa is the, is the book right. that has the chats of Hoolabe. Uh, right. Hoolabe Naleo yeah. Kanaloa. The Voices of Kanaloa. Thanks. Well, we're getting, getting close to the end of the hour. Luana, do you have any more thoughts about sort of what the earth is telling us right now? We've had some wonderful conversations about that, but I wonder if you could close us out with your thoughts on what, what the oh. meaning of this time is. 
Oh my goodness. So the earth is really just saying stop. All the phonetic energy has been running around and how we just go move, um, exploit, exploit, exploit. She said stop. So the earth is actually a part of the, uh, the coronavirus. And the blessing of it now is, is allowing us to stop, take a breath, reset, rejuvenate, restore. Just in a very short time that this has been on and they've been shutting down all over the world, we've seen a massive resiliency in our natural world, in our environment. I mean, it quick, very quick. You know, and so it's like, wow, um, that for me, this is the blessing. It's allowing everybody to step back, take a breath, slow down, and really think about where you are, who you are, who's your family, who really is for you. Where, you know, there's so much gratitude because everybody's been coming together during this epidemic, even in the social distancing and in, 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 in to care. And the aloha that's been showered out um, to myself and the families around is it's it's beautiful. It's reconnecting. It's it's having that quiet space and bringing all the subtle nuances that you kind of forget because we're always rushing around and doing things. This has really allowed our earth and for us to listen to her. You know, she is in healing mode. She is she is needing us to really take a stand to say enough is enough. We've seen a, a cleaner air, cleaner waters, cleaner everything. You know, the fish coming back in, in certain areas, you know, of the dormant plants that haven't seen for long coming, coming forward. You know, there is an ancestral me memory that's taking place even on the earth. And for me, we've been on the Mauna. There was one pole, you know, it, it, like I think about the pole aina, and I've been using this prayer for years. But really, it's a prayer that talks about ridding the disease and the rot and the decay and the blight that set in, you know, removing these toxic environments so that new shoots can grow forward. This is allowing, that applies to us, not just the earth, but allowing new shoots, you know, our next generations to absolutely flourish and take it to the next levels. So this is our leaping point. This is, you know, this is where we leap. This is where we gain sacred grounds in understanding ourselves and our communities much better and how to support those communities in a way that's inclusive of a healthy earth and healthy oceans and healthy waters. Um, so, hmm. yes, that's... Let's our um, Kanaloa. E Kanaloa Nui Akea. Okay. Villa. Kanaloa Ma Aweakala Kane Kialaula Kala. Kana loa noho i ka moana ni, moana i ki, moana o o i ka i a ni, ka i a i ka mando ka ni uhi ke kohola o ho ni. Igi kai ho honua he, igi kai ulea palau, igi kai kea honua ka ho ka i lo loa. Ola ke kino vale vale o heu ngā vela o na au valua kanā loa o pa akamaka valua kanā loa o la. Lana i ke kai, lana i ka honua, lana i ka haupua kanā loa o ka moku pāpapa, ka pāpakahako ke au o lono, lono i ka pau. Ola i ke aua kanā loa. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you, Luana. Any last thoughts from anyone? Because mm -hmm. we've reached our hour. That was so beautiful. Thanks, Luana. Uh, last thoughts, Emmett? No, well, thanks, thanks for the opportunity to kind of like um, talk to a broader audience, especially mm -hmm. um, those in your network. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. All the luck. Mahalo. Thank you so much. Good luck with everything on Kaho Olave. Davey, last thoughts? Just mahalo and mahalo upon everybody. Please be well and take care mm -hmm. and keep connected and each other. Aloha, aloha. Aina. Thanks. Luana? Hi. Yep. No, I think the chant was there. Aloha, aina, aina, aloha, the land loves and we love that land. And see all
And Iola Kanaloa and Iola Mauna Wakia. Hi. Thank you all very much, and thanks everybody Hi. for listening. <laughs>